Hi friends, I know that many people like tutorial videos, but alas, judging by the statistics, they are not so popular. So please share this video with your friends. By doing this, you will contribute to the development of this section. Today we will talk about dimmers. I recommend not rewind the video, as the material will be useful especially for beginner hems. But before we start, a few words about the sponsor of this video, about the company GLC, which is one of the leaders in the field of production of printed circuit boards. You can order PCB of any complexity at the lowest prices. The price starts from $2 for 10 pieces. All links are in the description. Power controllers are different. Each has its own advantages and disadvantages. Dimmers belong to the category of phase pulse power controllers. They have an extremely simple circuit, are universal, and are included in a variety of devices. Plus, they are very cheap, that's why they are very popular. Dimmers can be found in household equipment, for example in lamps for adjusting the brightness of a light bulb, in power tools for adjusting engine speed, in heaters for adjusting the power of heating elements, and so on. In any power regulator, there is a power element that provides switching. In dimmers, this is a thruster or triac. Triac regulators consist of two main parts, the triac itself and the control unit. Simple relaxation generators are often used as the control unit. A set generator in the circuit of triac regulators, as a rule, diacs are used. Usually, a symmetrical type diac are used, that is, it doesn't have a polarity of connection and will work in both directions, regardless of the polarity of the power at its pins. A diac is a semiconductor element, but its principle of operation is similar to a spark gap. This component has a certain voltage at which it will operate. The most popular DB3 diac has an operation voltage or breakover voltage of 32 volts. That is, if a voltage of less than 32 volts is supplied to the diac, it's closed, but if it's more, then it sharply opens. Visually, the operation of the diac can be seen by assembling a simple circuit of a diac, a capacitor and a limiting resistor. As a load, we have a regular LED with a current limiting resistor. When power is applied to the circuit, the capacitor will slowly charge through a resistor. The multimeter now shows the voltage on the capacitor. As soon as the voltage on the capacitor reaches 32 volts, the diac opens. All energy accumulated in the capacitor through the open diac goes into the load, in our case the LED. As a result, it will light up. The voltage on the capacitor will drop sharply, hence the diac will close. Then the process repeats. The capacitor charges up to 32 volts, the diag is triggered and the LED flashes. Exactly the same happens in the dimmer circuit. Please note that in the circuit we have a variable resistor. In fact, with it we change the charge time of the capacitor. The greater resistance causes the longer charge of a capacitor. Therefore, the diag will operate less frequently and vice versa. That is, the operating frequency of the generator changes. In fact, this resistor and capacitor are a timing or frequency setting chain. Now let's look on at the triac. It consists of two thyristors connected in parallel, but in opposite directions. It has three pins, two anodes and one control pin or gate. If a trigger voltage is applied to the control pin, the triac opens. The diac just gives short pulses to the control pin of the triac and it trigger. Mains voltage through an open triac will go to the load and activate it. Thyristors and triacs in DC circuits can be opened by applying a trigger signal to their control pin. But even if you remove this signal, the triac will not close. Even if you close the control pin to the power supply ground, it also will not close. You can close the triac in the DC circuit if you remove voltage from the power pins or, roughly speaking, turn off the power and turn it on again. Therefore, triac regulators can't work in a DC circuit. 
In PWM controllers, power adjustment is carried out by changing the pulse duration. In a phase pulse regulator, everything is different. Well known that in mains we have an alternating sinusoidal current with a frequency of 50 Hz or 60 Hz in some countries. The blue beam shows the sinusoid that is fed to the input of the regulator, the yellow beam, what is at the load. In our case, the load is an incandescent lamp. For safety reasons, during the experiments, the high voltage supplied to the circuit is galvanically isolated from mains. So, rotating the variable resistor, we see that the sign on the load become partially cut off. The more the sign is cut off, the less power is supplied to the load. Such clipping or trimming of the sinusoid occurs for the following reason. The die gives a short impulse. At the moment of applying the impulse, the triac opens and passes part of the sinusoid. These are the moments of triggering of the diac. At this time, our diac was already closed. Because the voltage on the capacitor is below 32 volts, since it was discharged through a diac and an open triac. But the track is still open. We remember that it will only close if the voltage from its pins will remove. In the case of alternating current, the sine wave passes through the zero point. This is when the upper half cycle has ended and the lower hasn't yet begun. That is, in fact, the voltage is exactly zero and the track will close at the moment. Thus, the power supplied to the load depends at which specific part of the sinusoid the triac became open. If it opens at the beginning, the power is larger. If at the end, it is less. Same process is also repeated for the lower half wave of the sine wave. This phenomenon is called dimming. Well, that's the whole principle of phase pulse power adjustment. Such regulators have a rather high efficiency because can be said that the power element working in switch mode, that is, it is either open or closed. Such regulators, as already said, are often used to adjust engine speed in the angle grinders, drills, and so on. As a rule, that tools have collector motors, which aren't as critical to the principle of regulation as asynchronous motors. To adjust the asynchronous motors, usually frequency converters are used, which have a much more complex structure than a dimmer. When the dimmer is operated with an inductive load, for example, with a collector motor, additional RC circuits are used to suppress bursts. During my experiments, the classical dimmer circuit without this chain worked extremely unstable. Although perhaps this is because there are a bunch of mains equipment on my table, including noisy pulse sources. In general, here are a lot of electrical noise that could cause such a behavior of the dimmer, also possibly the interference from the dimmer itself. The power of the dimmer depends solely on the power of the power element, the triac. Now on sale you can find similar regulators for several kilowatts for just a few dollars. Among drawbacks is the heating of the power element, the triac, due to voltage drop on the semiconductor transitions, but in a different way it isn't possible. To get around this we are installing a triac on a heatsink. The more powerful is the connected load, the larger heatsink and the rated current of the triac. Another disadvantage is interference. Like any other pulse device that is connected to mains, dimmers create pulse interference in mains. One of the methods to prevent such interference is the installation of the mains filters. Well, friends, I sincerely hope you were pleased. Let me remind you that you will find all the necessary links in the description. If you have any questions about electronics, ask them in our official group. Well, it remains for me to say goodbye. Until next time, with you as always, was Kassian TV.